All right, I don't want to spend a lot of time here, but we got to talk about something referred to as amine inversion. Uh, in this case, it turns out chiral centers that we've been dealing with have almost exclusively been carbon, but in principle, they don't have to be. So in this case, we might envision nitrogen being one, as long as it's got four different groups. And I was careful not to say bonded to four different groups, because a lone pair of electrons can actually be considered a different group, so leading to a chiral environment. And so in this case, this nitrogen's got a lone pair, a methyl, an ethyl, and a hydrogen. That's four different groups. And if it were anybody other than nitrogen, it would be considered chiral. Uh, but it turns out for amines, as long as there's not like a, they're not part of a ring or something like that, or uh, excessive bulkiness, uh, turns out they invert R to S and S to R pretty routinely, even at low, fairly low temperatures. You got to get to a really, really low temperature to prevent this from happening. And so, turns out the word chiral is defined as when an, a compound and its mirror image are not identical and do not readily interconvert. And so, as a result, this compound that looks chiral ends up being achiral because the two enantiomers are just readily interconverting with each other at any kind of reasonable temperature. That's amine inversion. Again, it's specific to nitrogen. So up to now, we've seen that if you want to identify a compound as chiral, look for chiral centers. And the exception compounds would be the meso compounds. They have chiral centers, but are still achiral. Well, it turns out there's an exception going the other way around, and a couple of them, uh, where you can have compounds that are chiral, even though they do not have chiral centers. And that's examples of the next two here. So it turns out one of them is based on the alene system. And the alene system has two adjacent carbon-carbon double bonds. So, and for this to be possible, on one side, your trigonal plane arrangement has to be, say, in the plane of your screen, whereas on the other side, your trigonal plane arrangement would have to be in the perpendicular plane. The only way you can get the pi bonds to line up properly into adjacent positions, because they have to use, this middle carbon's got to use different p orbitals for both. So, as a result, this, even though there's no chiral centers, because these are all sp2 hybridized carbons, has a chance to appear to be somewhat tetrahedral in shape, and therefore has a chance to be, uh, uh, be chiral and have enantiomers. And so it turns out the requirement here is that the carbon on the left side of the alene system has to be bonded to two different things, and the carbon on the right side of the system has to be bonded to two different things. So here, methyl and hydro on the left, methyl and hydro on the right. And it doesn't matter if they're the same two different things, but it turns out that this compound now and its mirror image will not be identical. And so we refer to this compound as being chiral, and these would be enantiomers of each other. Now, if on the other hand, you bond either one of those carbons to do different things, and the other side can still be bonded to two different things, and I'll put a hydrogen and fluorine on that side, but in this case, as long as either one of the N carbons is bonded to two identical groups, there will be an internal mirror plane that you can identify right down the middle of the molecule. So in any compound with an internal mirror plane, you might recall is a chiral. Now, we wouldn't call it a meso compound because there's no chiral centers, but it is a chiral. And an achiral compound and its mirror image would be identical, not enantiomers. Turns out, in addition to the alene system, you end up with something similar in biphenyl. Now, biphenyl is when you've got two benzene rings connected to each other here. So, and when you've got them connected to each other, so you've got a couple different substituents that might be getting in each other's way, and that's the substituents that go in these four positions. Now, as long as they're just little hydrogens, these benzene rings are just free to rotate around each other, rotate around that single bond right there. Uh, and that's not a problem, but if you make three out of the four large substituents, this thing will not be able to rotate uh, to any significant extent. Uh, and in this case, anything larger than hydrogen really will do. And so the examples I've put, I've put a methyl, so and a bromine on one carbon and a methyl and a bromine, I say on carbon, on one benzene ring and a methyl and a bromine on the other benzene ring, and that'll prevent the free rotation. So in this case, I've got all four being bulkier than hydrogen. All I really needed was three out of four. And as long as the ring on the left has two different groups, methyl and bromine, and as long as the ring on the right has two different groups, in this case, it's the same two different ones, but they're still different from each other, and that's the key, bromine and methyl, this thing's going to be chiral. So, and his corresponding mirror image will not be identical to him, and this will be his enantiomer. Now, if on the other hand, so let's draw this one more time. Oh, uh, not there. So if in this case, either one of these rings has two of the same group in those ortho positions, even if the other one has two different groups, 
So it's not going to matter. This thing, and again, this ring on the right is on the horizontal plane. So this thing's going to have an internal mirror plane right down the middle. And any compound with an internal mirror plane would be achiral and would be identical to its mirror image. It would not have an enantiomer. So these are kind of a couple examples of compounds that can be chiral without chiral centers. But you should also realize when they would be achiral as well.